We're live? We're live, my man. We are live. Okay. What's up, brother? How you doing? <laughs> Life is good. It's good to see you. It is. Good to see you, man. Let's get into this. Uh, congratulations. Security Plan is nominated for the Best Drama Film Award. Um, we'll be finding out the results of that in just a couple of days on Saturday is the Texas Short Film Festival in San Antonio. Um, congrats, man. Good job. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. You know, the Texas Short Film Festival, uh, the most competitive category by far is the drama film category. So you had a lot of competition mm -hmm. there. But getting nominated is an accomplishment in itself. Um, but we aren't surprised because, you know, you've, you won a big award in Oregon last year. And so uh, you started one heck of a, a film, festival, uh, film festival run, man. You've done really, really well with this film. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's been it's been a fun ride. I didn't think I was going to drag it out this long, but that's just kind of how. This was my first time entering stuff in festivals, so I learned a lot. Yeah, there's no dragging about it, man. People got to see this stuff. You know, we spend all this time creating uh, movies and media and and content, and people always want new things, fresh things that just came out. And um, you know, the fact that you're doing the tour with this is is really cool. And from what I understand, you're going to be in attendance, right? Of course, yeah. All right. Well, thanks for making the trip. Sincerely appreciate that. Can you please give us the synopsis of your film? Because I'm really bad about giving away the end. So I'll let you put it in your words. Yeah, I'll try to think about that without giving away the end. Um, basically, a brother is down on his luck. He's a single dad. He just got out of jail. And he has a successful brother who's a business owner. And they're meeting at night to kind of formulate a plan for the loser brother to kind of get his life together. Hmm. I think it's the best I can say without giving away uh, the twist. What motivated you to write this specific story? Um, there was a few things. First off, like I told you before, I was kind of treading water with my film career and I set this goal to make one low budget short film a month for a year. And this was the first one. And so I wanted to do something that was nice and simple, one location short film. Um, and Scott McMahon, the other actor, I hadn't met him in person until the one time we met up prior to the shoot, mm -hmm. but I knew of him as like the other half Asian guy in Portland who's always cast in like corporate gigs and, you know, the generic ethnic non-threatening dad and stuff like that. And I thought it would be a fun opportunity for us to both act in the scene that has some more meat to it and actually get to do some real acting. And he was on board and, uh, also, there's a movie called Before the Devil Knows You're Dead. It was Sidney Lumet's last film before he died. And it has Ethan Hawke and Philip Seymour Hoffman. And there's a scene where they meet up and they conspire to rob their parents' jewelry store. And that kind of planted this seed. And I made it more familiar with what I'm used to, which is working in restaurants, having my Asian single mom. And I just it just kind of went from there. Oh, man, that's great. Um, that's a heck of a backstory. And you brought up a lot of things in there, you know, typecasting and, and um, you know, opportunities and, and people who do corporate work in order to um, open up opportunities to, to do their film work on the side kind of thing. And, you know, how you grow your career in that way. The lead actor is very, very good in this film. Uh, a lot of good ratings from the judges. It's amazing. Yeah. So Not you know, only is he really, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead, please. So Scott, not only is he a really amazing actor, but he used to run Film Trooper, which for a while was like the number one uh, filmmaking podcast on iTunes. He had a speaking role on Grimm. I, well, I booked a speaking role on Grimm too, but they ran out of time and they cut it out. But the moral of my story is he's, he's further down the road. And when he met up to shoot that film, it was the night before he had to leave at like four in the morning to go to San Diego for Thanksgiving to meet with his friends. And we were there at like midnight um, in this warehouse. It's raining outside. And, and I just kept being like, Scott, are you sure? And he's like, I want to make sure you have everything you need. And he was so patient and cool. And I know it was a pay cut compared to what he normally makes for something like that. And uh, I, I don't know. He's just, he's a great guy. I couldn't have asked for a better, bigger brother in the scene for multiple reasons. Yeah, he did a great job in this, man. So uh, good, good job casting. And uh, I was going to ask you, what, what got you into filmmaking for the first time? You know, you're directing, you said that you, you set this goal for yourself, but rewind a little bit. So why would you set this goal? Why, 
you, at one at one point you're a person with good ideas, and then you move on to someone you know who's going to make content and put it in front of somebody. That's a big step. Yeah, man, Michael, I told you I was going to try not to get emotional <laughs> on this one. Um, I got to give a shout out to uh, everyone in San Luis Obispo and uh, this restaurant I worked at called Novo. Um, there was a time when it was going to close down for a retrofit and that, that stuff always takes longer than you think. And I knew some of the kids were graduating college. And when we reopened, a lot of them were going to be gone. And it was such a special place that we worked at. And so during that time, I worked at Novo during the day and I bartended at night. And so it kind of gave me a time crunch where I, I had to, if I was going to make a little documentary that, that captured what a beautiful place that was, I had to do it now. So I had two jobs. I saved up. I got a computer. I got a crappy Sony Handycam because this is like 2006, I think. And I just made this little short film. And, um, and I'd gone to, or I have an animation degree. So I knew how to do compositing and After Effects and some basic editing and stuff. But I'd never told a story like that. And I remember showing it to them and them just being like, are, what, the, you did this? What are you, I'm oh, sorry. Um, it, them genuinely, you know, enjoying it. Yeah. And then after we uh, opened, there was this, I don't know if you remember the show On the Lot. It was on Fox. It was yeah. like, yeah, so again, I was forced. I had a really short uh, window to make a short film and get it on there. And at the time I'd had uh, issues with my eye, which had come back, but I had to wear an eye patch. And so I just wrote it into this. I made this short film called Date with a One-Eyed Monster and kind of like a double entendre. Mm -hmm. Entered it in there. It didn't, I didn't get on the show, but I got like a four star out of five from people that watched it online. And I showed it out on the patio at the restaurant with like a hundred plus people. And you get so nervous because you don't know if they're going to get your humor or if they're going to go along for the ride or not. So I'm like, oh, God, it's going to suck. They're not going to laugh. It's going to be crickets. And I like scooch down in my chair. And then to hear them genuinely go along for the ride and the laughs hit and everything and know that a lot of them are strangers and it's not just courtesy laughs. I just had this overwhelming, like heart pounding body rush of just knowing that like, okay, my humor and my weird personality and everything, like that can translate to something that people will identify when they, when they watch my short films, hopefully down the road features. And I've always been a storyteller that rambles on and, as you can tell just from this story. But yeah, that, that was the genesis that made me realize, that, okay, I used to make VHS movies and stuff when I was a kid and I learned about storytelling in animation school. You know, I think I have what it takes to be a filmmaker. You talked about something that was very interesting. You talked about the live effect. You talked about seeing, um, I know you weren't talking specifically about a film festival, but you're talking about seeing it in front of a crowd with other people looking at it and you're really putting yourself out there and getting the opinion of, of people who are strangers to you. Cause your friends are all just going to tell you it's great. You know, they don't want to hurt your feelings. Your family's going to tell you, you know, thumbs up. You screened at Oregon short film festival and had a fantastic reception last year um, in uh, the summer of 2021. Can you talk about that a little bit and your, your big award you won as well. Can you talk about that? Yeah. <laughs> Man. Um, yeah, when you sit there with an audience, um, there are multiple things that are beneficial. One of them is there'll be all these moments where when you're just by yourself editing, you're like, is that moment a little too pregnant? Should I tighten that up? Or does that joke hit? And you have things that you're not sure about. When you can feel the energy of the audience, you get your answer on whether a moment you can just feel their energy if you let you went too long before you cut. And things like that and also I'm a big fan of comedy and I've never pulled the trigger on going to an open mic but I have probably like 20 minutes of just random material written in my journal but I've noticed that when comedians are live they have to know when to just kind of mellow out and let the laughter calm down before they say the next bit otherwise they're going to laugh over the momentum of things that they've stacked and I realized that with security plan that there was a couple of moments I had to tweak a little bit because the crowd they always laugh and then they go over the next line. So just this like micro adjustment of a few frames made a huge difference of them catching the next joke. Mm. Um, but to, to what you said, when, 
when people, when you can feel the energy of them going along for the ride and they are not your friends and it's their genuine reaction, there is nothing like that, especially because of the imposter system low that you have right before it plays. And then the high of that feeling that they genuinely care. They genuinely want to find out what happens. They're genuinely surprised by the twist. And, and like if the music catches them, I remember this guy was tapping his knee to the music at the end. And that song kind of going off on a tangent, I didn't have that song until after I'd already shot, shot it. And this really nice guy named Steve Call, who has a group called the Brass Kings, he's this rockabilly kind of rock and roll guy in Minnesota. He gave me the rights to that song for free. And it, when you look at the dialogue with the shots, it looks like I used that song first, like Tarantino, and then assembled the scenes to it. But it was just serendipitous. And uh, anyway, when that guy was tapping his knee, I almost started crying. Like it made, it just made me so happy. There, there's nothing like that feeling of having an audience of strangers that truly go along for the ride. Man, well, you sold the film, the live film festival thing better than me, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're committed to doing live and and you know with drama it's tough because sometimes you have to wait till the end to get your response um sometimes you know comedy and horror you know you're seeing look on people's faces like instantly but sometimes in drama people are absorbed when they're watching which is a which is a little bit different and i think you mm -hmm. handle that very well the ability to make adjustments is talking about something i talked about and you know the first chapter of my book is uh, how I wrote the short film a long time ago and it was 20 minutes long and, you know, people were 26 minutes long and people were watching it, but then some people were on their phones and bored. And when I cut the film down to like 14 minutes, I suddenly had an entirely different response to the film. People were more positive. They were more engaged. And sometimes you do have to watch. You have to test market your audience a little bit. And that's what film festivals are all about. That's what we do. That's why we only have content that's 30 minutes or less because we want opportunities for people, as many people as possible, to see it on the screen and make their adjustments. It's good to hear that you made adjustments to yours. I mean, we liked it as it is, but we're, it's good to hear that you made adjustments to your film. Mm -hmm. That leads Thank me you. to my next question. Yeah, good job, man. Leads me, my next question is, what did you learn? Um, you know, what, what did this film teach you? Uh, every film is a little piece of film school. What did, this, what did Security Plan uh, teach you, good or bad? What did you learn from it? Well, I learned a, learned quite a few things. First off, I kind of err on the side of like being the underdog redneck from Redmond and trying to make everything as low budget as possible with as small of a crew as possible, which is kind of the opposite of like this younger generation that wants to do an Indiegogo every time they make a short film and make these like high budget, high concept projects. But I learned that, you know, there is some benefit to at least having a minimal amount of crew members to kind of cover your bases so that people have more mental bandwidth to focus on what they're doing. I had a really good acting coach in Portland and I'm just totally blanking on his name. I feel Ted Rooney, what we count. I learned what he taught me about acting with like, if there are moments where you're totally not, not feeling it and you need to get grounded again, you're much better off playing it how it is, playing the ball where it lays and just being true to yourself instead of trying to force it and trying to like sell it with your mannerisms or the inflection in your voice. And there were moments in that where so much of my headspace was worried about the lighting and the camera placement and everything that I had to kind of regroup. And luckily I had Scott as the other actor who's a lot more experienced and everything. Uh, but the, the main thing that I learned was you really have to ride this line of being kind and being collaborative and letting people know that their input is um, heard but you have to stick to your vision too. Because when you get in the edit and you don't have everything you need and it was because you tried to be too much of a nice guy, that is a terrible feeling. And uh, yeah, so I just, I'm just i still trying to work that out now. I've made some stuff since then and I guess it's a growing process, but that's part of the reason I wanna make these low budget, simple concept short films before I just start throwing the money hose at it and trying to do a crowdfunding because I want to learn some of those lessons and have them really internalized in my memory uh, so I can bring that to set. Planning makes a difference. Well, this has been, this has been great, man. This has been very, um, I appreciate your transparency in this interview and uh, we're going to get out of here, but is there anything else that you wanted to add at all before we go? 
Um, just thank you to you. Thank you to all the film festival circuit guys, the judges at the Texas Short Film Festival. Um, I really think it's awesome what you're doing. And uh, I have to give a shout out to Aaron Muchastegui as well. He's the one that gave me the funding to make the short film. He lives in Texas. Oh. Which is why when you're like, are you sure you're coming? And I was like, I'll hitchhike or take a Greyhound, whatever I have to do to get there. So I'm really looking forward to it. So thank you for what you're doing for guys that are at my stage in, the, in their filmmaking careers. It really makes a big difference. My man, thank you. I appreciate the kind words. Well, I'll see you, and uh, we'll do a post interview maybe next week, but I'll see you at the event uh, on Saturday, okay? Sounds good. See you in a couple of days. Thanks, Mike. Take it easy. All right.